right, are you ready to learn a fun thing? In Photoshop, there is a tool called Puppet Warp. So we're going to look at the Puppet Warp tool, and then we're going to apply the Puppet Warp tool to a timeline to create an animation, like this little kitty cat that you see here on the screen. So what this is going to consist of is multiple frames, and each frame just looks a little bit different. Think like a flip book. So there's a way in Photoshop to set this up, and I will show you that now. I'm going to start off by closing this and resetting my workspace just so that everything matches on the screen. And you might want to do that if you're doing it along with me. And then go find an, a picture. Uh, a clip art that's already on a transparent background is going to be your easiest bet, but you could also do a picture. I'll show you both ways. So I'm going to open up a clip art that I've saved um, from the computer. Let's say um, this scarecrow. There we go. Got that off the Google. And I'll go ahead and name the layer SC for Scarecrow. Now, one thing that you're going to have to do is create multiple layers, duplicating as you go, and then making changes to each one using this Puppet Warp feature. So let me show you how this works. Here's my first layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging this layer down to the little new piece of paper button down there, the new layer button. That makes a copy. It, the, what they're called in Photoshop doesn't matter. Now, in Photopea, they're actually, it does matter because it's done differently. But in Photoshop, it's not. Okay, so we've got the copy. Now I'm going to use Edit, Puppet Warp, and it's going to put what's called a mesh over the top of it. Now I can put in little push pin points. So I'm going to put a point at the neck, and you'll always want to put a point down at the bottom so that it doesn't move from the bottom, otherwise it'll bounce around. It's kind of easier with things that aren't connected to the bottom because the bottom will bounce around. All right, and then you can put in points wherever you think you might want movement. So in my case, I just want to have him wave. Uh, actually, let's give him an elbow. So I'm going to give him a little elbow there. Okay, now I'm going to grab a hold of one of the points and use it to lift up. Now remember, my bottom layer is underneath there. So, But this is good because now he's bending at the elbow a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to copy this layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. Edit, Puppet Warp. I'm going to put my, it doesn't remember where the pins are. I wish it did. It doesn't. So I'm going to have to put pins in at the bottom again so the bottom doesn't move. I always put one at the neck. And then again, I'll put my points here. And then we'll drag this up some more. And if you want to move your elbow out a little bit, see like his whole body will move. And then that stick will start to move. Um, which, you know, if he's a really exciting cartoon character, you know, yay. All right, so there it is. And then I probably need that middle frame again. So since this would be the middle frame, I'm just going to make a copy of it and stick it up on the top. Okay, so there is my, my thing. So this is the way the animation would go. It would be there, and then there, and then there, and then back to the middle, and then it would replay itself. Okay, now to do this in Photoshop, once you get it all set up, we have to find the Timeline panel. It's going to be under the Window menu. So Window, Timeline. It'll show up at the bottom of your screen. And you're going to click Create a Frame Animation. We're going to do Frame by Frame. Click it. And you'll see your picture down here. What you're going to do now, though, is select all your layers. So hold down Shift and click the top one and then click the bottom one to select them all. And then come over to these three little lines, the options for the timeline. Click on that and choose Make Frames from the Layers. Now all four of your layers should have a frame. And if you click through them, you can now actually see them do their thing. Underneath is a play button. So hit your play button. There we go. There's my little, there's my little dude having a good time. Now if it plays too quickly for you, you can change these little numbers down here. So like point one is kind of the standard, unless it's just really going fast or you want it to go faster. Um, so here he goes. There we go. And you they don't all have to be the same. You can type in other and you can do whatever you want as well. So once you get it like you want it, all you're going to do is export it, but you have to do it a special way. So you go to File and then Export, but instead of going to Export As like normal, we're going to go to Save for the Web. It's a legacy feature and I guess they haven't added anything new in the newer versions. All right, so here it is. It's not moving yet, and it's maybe too big. Like if I was going to put this on a slideshow or something, he's way too big. So I'm going to go ahead and change the image size. So kind of have an idea what size you want it to be. Because animations are big because they have multiple layers. So you really don't want the pictures to be any bigger than they have to be. Okay, now I've got my size picked around 500 pixels. 
And then let's hit play again so we can preview it one more time. Okay, looks good. Now all you gotta do is hit save. And it sizes it down so you can see by 50% size I'm doing. And then I can just give it a name. I'm gonna call it Scarecrow A and put it in there. And then bam, we've got a Scarecrow animation. If I come over here and click on it, pops up, there he is. Kind of bouncing around, bouncing his little stick around, okay? All right, let me do this one more time. I'll do it with a picture. So let's say I have a picture of me. I'll go to my camera roll and grab that. And <laughs> you're going to select your person, and you could do it by any method that you want. It is picky if you are in Photopea. Like, it can't, you can't use selection tools. You kind of just have to use a hard brush in Photopea. But in Photoshop, it does not matter. So let's say, I'm going to say, pretend that's good enough. It's actually not. It's kind of an awful selection. Um, I should probably, oh, that's not good. I need a hard brush here if I'm going to hit those corners. I'm just going to kind of fix it so it's just, you know, plain. Don't need anything fancy here. I really should use a smaller brush, but okay. So once you kind of get it like you want it to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. Animations are meant to kind of be funny, so they don't have to be like perfect like everything else does. Okay, now you're going to do that same process. I'm going to call it me. I'm going to duplicate it. I have a copy, and I'm going to go to Edit, Puppet Warp, put in my points. And you don't want yourself floating around, so this is where you're going to probably have to put in some points on the bottom, and then your neck and your head. And you could do other places too, but all right, so here I go, and I'm going to grab this one and scoot my head this way because we're going to bebop that way and hit OK. And then let's say we're going to bebop the other way. Actually, let's copy this one because I'm going to have it come back to the middle, so we'll put that back to the middle one here. And then we'll make it bebop the other way. There we go. And then edit, puppet warp, put in your points, and bebop the other way. And it's going to smash pixels because it's not perfect. But it is kind of funny. Like if somebody is not smiling, you can make their frowny face a smiley face. So that's kind of exciting. Um, all right, so there we go. There's that one. Um, yeah. All right, that's it. So now we have to select all the layers. Come down, click Create Frame Animation. Click your three dots or three lines. Make frames from the layers. And then we can take a look at it. There I am bebopping. Of course, I can change the time and all that. And then I can export that out. Again, make sure that when you export that you do save for web. Now, you don't want to export a GIF with all of this space around it. So always crop it down to just the area that you need. Um, there is a way in Photoshop to crop that way. You're just going to go up to Image and Trim. And this works also in Photop Trimming. And we're going to trim the transparent pixels. Trim all the sides, hit OK. And then it trims it to just the transparent pixels are off um, in that rectangle. And there we go. File, export, export, uh, save for web, resize it down if you want to. Uh, when you hit preview, it'll go. If it's too insane, and that one's definitely too insane, you can always hit cancel, go back in, make changes to it however you need it to be. You can select all of these at one time, by the way, and change all of them at once. All right, then file, export, save for the web. Try it out. There we go. That's better. Now we're chilling. All right, save. And then there it is. Just make sure it saves as a GIF file. Have fun.